Hey guys, it's Somber Shadow 001 back at it again with the video games, back at it again with Destiny 2. I know it's been a while since I made a video, and that is because I wanted to wait till the end of the season. We are literally six days away from the Witch Queen reveal and the season 15 reveal on top of that. Um, but that's not what this is about. This video is about specifically my thoughts on season of the splicer as a whole now i don't think there's going to be any seasonal event for you know for this season i believe that'll be next season um so that's why i'm making this video because i'm pretty sure that it is done the story is completed and uh, i have to say this has definitely been one of the best seasons in destiny i i have to say if you're talking from a story standpoint this is easily one of the best seasons we've ever had. Um, even, I, I think it's better than Season of the Chosen. It seems like a majority of people think that this season was way better than Season of the Chosen. And I don't know if that's because there was so much buildup to this season's story. Or if it's just people preferred the cycle of this season over you know, the cycle of Season of the Chosen. Maybe it's because it has to do with the Vex and the Taken and not so much uh, the Cabal anymore because we've had a lot of Cabal seasons over um, the timeline of Destiny 2. So that makes sense. Honestly, I think this season was incredible. Uh, I do have... I don't think it's perfect. I mean, I do have some issues with, uh, with the season. Specifically with the ending, I felt like it was a little anticlimactic. Not in terms of, you know, the epilogue, but actually fighting Quoria and ending the Endless Night, um, I kind of felt, eh, I like, I, I kind of felt a little meh about that, because I feel like Quoria was so built up for so long that we, you know, we kill her off in a, in a season, and if you don't know who Quoria is, it's a Taken, um, Vex construct, I believe it's a Taken Hydra, and, uh, that was what was responsible for the Endless Night that was playing the city. Because it was corrupted, it worked its way into the Vex network, it's controlled by Samathun, um, which, of course, will lead into whatever Season 15 will be, and, of course, Witch Queen when we eventually encounter Samathun. But uh, I thought that fell flat for me. I didn't like how early we took it down. That was the main issue I had. Um, we t I mean, it did take eight weeks to get there, which is fine. But there was still another, I believe, four weeks left in the season after. And that was kind of the issue I had where we killed Quoria. And to, to fill that, you know, basically that two weeks, there was two, a two week space that we filled pretty much, which was the season or the season, the seasonal event, the, uh, the solstice of heroes. And... Even then, I felt that way. I didn't have fun with that. There was a, definitely a content drought after killing Quoria, which is definitely my feeling on it. Um, as soon as we killed Quoria, and then we had the seasonal event, I mean, I was one of the few people, I completed the whole thing, my whole armor set, the first week of that whole event. So I really had nothing to do. And even when Souls of Heroes ended, we still had a whole week of pretty much nothing story-wise. And then we had where we are now. Or then we had our, um, our epilogue. And then now we have another thing, which is just a mo which I think is interesting. I like a little memorial set up for the fallen and the humans that died during the epilogue. Now, we'll get to the epilogue eventually, but I want to talk about just the main meat of the story. I think that was incredible. Uh, having Mithrax come back, now us being allied with the Fallen, us learning more about the Fallen cu culture, and just how everything that we thought was completely different, how it made me feel horrible about killing Fallen all the time, especially for quests when I was killing them just to like grind out stuff. It made me feel really, really bad. And I think it made a lot of people feel bad, and I actually appreciate that. I think that was really well done on Bungie for us to feel for an enemy race. It's literally a race that got uprooted from their own home and came to here for nothing. 
you know, with nothing. They wanted to know why the Traveler left them, and some of them ended up going down a savage path in order to survive. And the fact that we murdered many of them, the fact that they are completely afraid of Saint-14, who is known for killing the Fallen, and the story between that of how Saint-14 has to reconcile with all the stuff that he did to these people, even though these Fallen are not... Or fallen. I should call them elixni because they're not fallen. These elixni are not their enemy, and him having to come to terms with that, and him realizing, "Wow, I've killed many elixni who are deserving, and many who were not." And I thought that was incredible. I thought it was interesting, and that whole build up for that whole season of that, and then that leading to the epilogue with him fighting side by side with Mithrax. And saving Fallen from the Vex invasion of the city, I thought was incredible. That was such an amazing payoff uh, of seeing those two fight together. And also seeing all of all of these characters come together to help save the Fallen. Having Amanda Holiday show up, having Zavala show up, and having Ikora show up to help them. Because it's only them. And then us, you know, pushing back the Fallen. We, of course, close the portal. We're not there to help them. We we are, you know, we're there at the last, you know, in the Elixir Quarter at the last city to push back the Vex. And then we eventually go into Vex Network. So that cutscene happens while we're in the Vex Network. And we're trying to shut down the portal to stop the Vex incursion from coming in. And I feel like this is kind of a response to Season of the Undying, where we made a Vex portal to go into the Black Garden in the city. A lot of people thought the Vex were going to invade, and that was going to be the whole catalyst for the rest of the year when Shadowkeep came out. And that never happened. We had it happen this season, so I guess, you know, for people who wanted to see that happen, there you go. Um, also, the whole story with Lakshmi and getting the factions more involved, I thought was interesting, considering we've had nothing from the factions for years now. Uh, I thought that was cool. It made They made me hate Lakshmi so much. And the fact that she's now dead made a lot of people be like, yeah, good, because you tried to kill the Fallen, and you tried to do all this horrible shit and just, uh, to them, even though they've done nothing wrong and they're trying to help us save the last city. I love the psychological element of all everyone in the city is getting restless because they haven't seen daylight in two months, which I think is really, really cool as well. I thought that was interesting and that we're losing power because of that because we're based off of a solar uh, energy, which I think is really, really cool as well. It was something I didn't know about. Uh, it was something I completely had no idea. So I thought that, that was really cool. And honestly, that psychological elements you don't really see in the story, but is in the lore. You hear about the interactions with Fallen being in the tower and, you know, how humans are that, it, which culminated in a horrible, like, horrifying story of them docking a Fallen's limbs because he said a swear word thinking that it was a nice thing to say. Uh, and that was a made of holiday's fault, which is why she comes to the end of the Fallen as her redemption for that. Because she was being sarcastic and the Fallen didn't understand sarcasm. Um, I thought that was interesting. Uh, the Fallen having ramen, that was uh, cute. Obviously, that's when, you know, that tur took a dark turn. I was really interested. I liked that. Um, even the Fallen's interaction with Guardians, and especially Guardians who use stasis, they had an issue with that, which I think is interesting because they're the House of Light, obviously. There's a neat little lore bit where um, I believe it's the brother of the Fallen who got his uh, limbs docked by the people is being hunted down because he's looking for him. And a stasis guardian saves him. And he's mad at the stasis guardian because he goes, you use the same power that Aramis has. Aramis got corrupted and tried to kill her own people. You're going to do the same. And I thought that was very, very interesting. I love this Fallen dynamic that we're getting this, this whole year. Um, I feel like it makes up definitely for the kind of lacklusterness of Beyond Light in terms of the fallen economy and how that kind of works. Um, and that kind of had a disappointing conclusion, obviously. But I loved just everything having to do with this season of the story, learning more, um, of course, of having... Um, I believe it's either Ido, I don't know if they call her Sure Ido or just Ido, I believe it's just Ido, who is Mithrak's daughter, or adoptive daughter, and she's the scribe for the Elixni of the House of Light, and she's the one that tells everybody about the story of everything, 
of, you know, this is our culture. This is what these symbols mean. This is how we live. Uh, meeting the hatchlings, which I thought was adorable, and finding out that Guardians actually killed hatchlings, which is horrible. It, it was all very, very interesting. And seeing the progression of the Elixir Quarter as people are getting restless, because if you go back, you'll notice that there's more and more stuff is getting destroyed. Um, like, they create a big um, effigy. Or I guess not an effigy, but a... a a monument to the traveler that they made out of scrap metal. And if you go back later, it was destroyed because the humans came and destroyed their ether, which they need to survive, and destroyed that because they don't believe that they are really for humanity. And I think that's very interesting. I'd love to see where, where the rest of this will go, especially with season 15. A lot of people are thinking it's going to end in the Dreaming City. I agree. I think it's definitely going to end in the Dreaming City. I think Marasov will return and somehow uh maybe it'll have to do with the curse again and maybe the curse is now broken now that we've killed quaria and there's some sort of uh, issue maybe we have to kill don and karu one last time maybe it has to do with the 15th wish that we don't know about considering this is the 15th season of destiny 2 i don't know i'm very excited to see what will come from you know witch queen and season 15 whatever that will be called and whatever that will entail um hopefully i believe i hopefully the crow is going to be more involved I, I feel like the crow hasn't been involved at least in this season he hasn't really been involved which i which i get you want to make way for these new characters uh, i believe they'll definitely bring focus back on the crow again with next season if in fact it does uh, come to the Dreaming City. I would really like it if he finds out about his past because he's been having dreams. Uh, if you look into the lore and stuff like that about who he once was, he doesn't know anything that he's done. I would love for him to find out and see, you know, what kind of dynamic us and, um, and Crow will have, especially if uh, Crow becomes Hunter Vanguard. That will be incredible. I think that would be definitely worth it. Everyone knows now who he is he just doesn't know who he is which i think is uh very interesting and uh I, I would love to see how that will impact our guardians friendship with the crow because we do have a friendship in terms of season of the hunt if you read into the lore and stuff like that we were drinking with him we were having fun with him and then he might possibly have a romance with amanda holiday who knows um i'm, I'm very very interested and seeing where the Crow's story will end up this year, and how that will tie into Witch Queen. Not only that, but of course Osiris and everything that's going on there, because it's pretty much confirmed that Osiris is not himself, that he is now missing. Um, and a lot, I know a lot of people are like, is Osiris Sabathun? I don't think Osiris is Sabathun. I think he's bewitched by Sabathun, um, basically brought on from the death of Sagira, and I also have an interesting theory about Sagira. Basically, think I think she's not really dead, even though I I posited this to the the Reddit uh, for Destiny Lore, and they said no, she's dead. Here's proof. I think when they mean dead, that she's Sagira is dead, but her, the shell, the ghost shell, is being used. And uh, I had a whole theory about that, basically because of the con the leaked concept art of what we think is Sabathun, if that is indeed true, and that is what Sabathun will be for the Witch Queen, um, I think that the floating ghost next to her is Sagira, and that she somehow has corrupted, or used to be Sagira, and has created a new consciousness in Sagira's body, corrupted it into the Hive's own kind of ghost, and I'm wondering if that means they have the light, and in which case I would love to fight another light-based being, Consider we only got to do that once, and that was with Gaul, and that was kind of lackluster. I would love to see something uh, deeper than that, or maybe she has both the light and the darkness like we do. I'll be very interested. Obviously, you know, will we see another subclass? I'm almost certain we will. Will it be corruption? I don't know. There's actually a very interesting video, and I'm sorry I can't remember the name of the guy, but he made an incredible video of creating these subclasses and breaking it down uh, of what these subclasses would do for each person and how it kind of has the same pillars in terms of stasis, where stasis is always, you know, it's about slow, freeze, shatter. He had his old thing uh, that was a mission statement for corruption. 
um, which was, I believe it was, hmm, I, I don't remember exactly. I forget, but I do remember one of them was like feed or one of them was transmute. I do know specifically one of them was transmute. It's a while. If you just look up corruption subclasses on YouTube, you'll be able to find it. Um, it was very interesting. It was very cool. I think, um, you know, if we do get a corruption based subclass in destiny two, it'll be very interesting to see, but well, I digress. I know I went off on a tangent about Witch queen and what's coming this future because I'm just honestly, I'm wicked excited. I think season 14 season of the splicer was a really, really, really well done season. And I hope that the storytelling that we've been getting these last two so far, Season of the Hunt was a little eh, but in terms of Chosen and Splicer, I hope the storytelling that they're doing continues for, for the rest of, of Destiny 2's uh, life, you know, life cycle. It is just absolutely incredible and well done. I'm very, very interested to see what the future will hold. Obviously, I'll, I'll I'll make a video next week about the Witch Queen reveal, what we'll learn, and, you know, season 15, and what we'll learn about that as well. So I'm very interested. Anyway, guys, I'm going to let you go. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. What were your thoughts on this season? And uh, remember, apagando las luces.